Long finned eels are common in rivers, creeks and lakes down the east coast of Australia. They're also found in New Zealand, New Guinea and New Caledonia. The species was first scientifically described in 1867 by the Viennese naturalist Franz Steinduckner. I made friends with Ellie, I'm calling her Ellie because she's probably a lady, in an idyllic freshwater pool in Sydney's Royal National Park. Long finned eels tend to be pretty fearless, but Ellie was especially confiding. Obviously she'd never had a bad experience with humans. Like all long finned eels, Ellie was spawned in the Coral Sea near New Caledonia. She arrived on Australia's east coast as a tiny elver or glass eel, maybe five or six centimetres long. Sensing fresh water, she swam into a little cove and up a small creek, at times slithering through tangles of sedge and wet fern to reach the pool she's made her home. Ellie's lair was under a huge slab of sandstone. She was less than half a metre long, so it'll be a few more years before she heads back to the coral sea to breed. By then she's likely to be between 75 centimetres and a metre and a half long. What a beautiful looking eel. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Ellie was very curious about my underwater camera and approached it cautiously several times to see what it was. Oh, he goes backwards. Didn't know he was to go backwards. Yep. Officially, she's a nocturnal predator on fish, crustaceans, mollusks and insects. But there she was, in broad daylight, and about 10 centimetres of water, having a pick at just about anything that might be edible, including some eggshell, left by passing bushwalkers. Long finned eels that become isolated in ponds and dams, from which it's impossible to reach the sea, just hang around getting bigger and bigger. There are records of eels up to 3 metres and 22 kilograms and over 50 years of age. The larger eels are usually female and they're mostly found in fresh water. Male eels tend to hang out in the brackish tidal zones of estuaries. One autumn, 
when Ellie is maybe twice her present size, she'll feel compelled to return to the coral sea to breed. If she makes it, she'll die there. But not before leaving possibly millions of elders to begin their journey to the waterways where they'll make their homes. <laughs>